Hi, my name's Craig. Uh, I grew up in England, in Leicestershire. Uh, I lived there till I was nine years old and then uh, moved to Dublin. I've been here ever since. I'm 36 now. Um, life was very good growing up. Like, uh, um, went to school in De La Salle College, Rathfarnham. Uh, lived up in near Marley Park. Uh, had a very happy childhood. A lot of good friends. Um, went to college after school for a month and didn't really like that, so I went backpacking. Um, spent four years in Australia, uh, a couple of years traveling Europe, in Holland, in France, Belgium. Um, never really settled down, I was kind of got restless, had itchy feet, you know, I was staying in the place for a certain amount of time and then I wanted to head off somewhere. Um, I came back to Dublin then and uh, set up my own businesses. Uh, on and off as I was a courier, I had my own courier company. And then um, when the internet kind of took off, uh, business died down a lot, but it was still enough to take over. So I uh, kept going for a while and had about 10 people underneath me, um, 10 people employed by me. And then I uh, finally went bankrupt. And. Uh, Ended up drinking and taking drugs, and ended up that pretty much led me to coming homeless. And uh, that was like four and a half years ago now. So uh, still out of the bank, quite a lot of money. Never have a mortgage, never have a bank loan. Um, seized everything off me: car, apartments, motorbikes, everything. Uh, so I ended up yeah homeless on the streets, um, drinking, taking drugs, staying in the hostels, and. Uh, that kind of, that's what got me writing poetry on the street basically. I wasn't kind of content sitting there with a cup in my hands begging for money. So I uh, decided to try something different. Like I've always been into poetry. Uh, so I had an idea just to sit down and write some poetry on the street and see how it went. And I've kind of been doing it off and on ever since now for the last kind of four years. Um, I've always had an interest in poetry. Like. Uh, as I said, it's like very similar to the lyrics of songs. Like so, uh, to me, it's one and the same. So uh, yeah, I've been just writing poetry there to Molly Malone and up at Stevens Green for the last few years, and uh, that's kept me going. I've taken intermittent breaks, gone away abroad, and come back and still done the same thing. Well, kind of coming to the end of it now. Like I think I won't be doing it now much more. Maybe just the odd week, just to. Uh, just to meet people and just get out there, you know. Poetry's like getting like your feelings out on kinda helps kinda like, you know, uh, it's like therapy almost. It's like talking to a counsellor, like just writing down your feelings, you know, and what's on your mind. Like I always stay away from like politics and what's in the news because people don't like to hear depressing things. They just want to hear kind of something like maybe inspirational, something positive, like so that's that's what I try and write. Like it's always something simple so I don't get too uh, too in depth because people like you know just want to stop take two minutes to read it you know very quickly because people are fairly busy like so they just want to stop read it and move on so um, I've never had anything published um, I would like to do a creative writing course maybe write a book or I'm not sure about having the poetry published like I've never been that kind of confident that I'd be that good to have something published but I'd be more into writing a book maybe something on my life story um, as I said, I used to ride up beside Stevens Green, but then I moved down to the Monty Malone, like, and that seems to be a lot busier spot. And now and again, the guards would hassle you because uh, you're blocking the, as I say, you're blocking the footpath. Like, you don't need a license now, like, but um, you will be, you know, taking up a certain amount of the footpath. So now and again, you get a guard, like, will have an issue with you, and, and I have been kind of arrested for that before. I won't go into that. Um, um, 
I did. Uh, yeah, I've had a few problems now with people stealing money from me now. So I used to have a guy that would just sit there keep an eye on the money all the time. And I used to kind of you know, split it like 60 40 with him, like, you know. But since then, like, I, um, we kind of had a bit of a falling out, like, you know, he kind of took a few quid out of me. So I've just done that on my own pretty much ever since. Um, I still enjoy doing it, like, even if I didn't need the money, I'd still like to do it, like, you know, maybe just come in once a week on a Saturday, like, because, I mean, you get, get to meet so many people, like, and you get so many compliments off people, like, you know, people really seem to appreciate it, like, that's really what, more, more why I do it, you know, and uh, even when the, the IMF thing was in the paper there, like, I had, I mean, in one day I had, like, four or five journalists from... France, Italy, Germany, Norway interview me, like, you know, because it's kind of like, uh, it's not so much about the recession, but it's about, like, you know, people who have maybe gone bankrupt who are, are in the process of going bankrupt, who have maybe lost everything, and it's just about being positive, like, you know, just getting on with life. No point in feeling sorry for yourself, because that's not going to get you anywhere. You just got to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and get on with it, like, you know, because. You know, a lot of people are in that position now, like with the recession and things seem a bit kind of doom and gloomy for the next few years. So it's nice just to stop and take a couple of minutes and read something positive and uplifting. And that's what I try and do. Like, you know, and most of the time, I say 90% of the time, we get a kind of positive attitude off people. A lot of it's the 10% like don't really bother me too much. You know, they, they've obviously got kind of some resentment that are just down on themselves and they go take it out on you. Like, but writing poetry, you do kind of. If it's out on the ground, you're putting yourself out there, like so. You are kind of open to, kind of, you know, people kind of coming up and, you know, having a go with you. But you know, I just brush that off. Like that's their issue, not mine. Like you know, and um, I'm hoping to go to college now, um, next September. You know, so I think I'm gonna knock the poetry on the head. Maybe do it says it says once a week, like just because I do kind of miss it. Uh, it's not an everyday thing now, like especially with the weather. Like, but um, I don't need the money as much now either. But um, it's just, uh, I just like the interaction with the people more or less, you know. So um, I might be heading to Tenerife now for the foreseeable future and then obviously hopefully go to college, do environmental studies in September. I would like to do a creative writing course in the meantime and maybe uh, you know, get the, not the knowledge, the know how how to get my thoughts and feelings down on paper, like write you know, a book. And, uh, Regrets, oh, regrets definitely will be, you know, going bankrupt. I made a good few mistakes there, like um, getting into addiction, like, you know, that's what led me to be homeless. But I don't look at that, I wouldn't really call that a regret. That's that's part of like, life, you know what I mean? I always think things happen for a reason, so I wouldn't see the last kind of four and a half years as wasted, you know. that's You, you learn from your mistakes, not your successes in life, so, you know, that kind of what shapes you as a person, like, so. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call, I don't have many regrets, I like, really say the truth, you know, and um, if I was to read poets, I wouldn't even consider myself a poet really, like, but um, I think it's good just to write down your thoughts and feelings on paper, like, whether it's, like, it's a lyrics for a song, lyric, you know, a poem, they're one and the same, like, you know, but it's good just to sit down and write your thoughts down on paper, if you go to any kind of, Therapy or treatment center anywhere in Ireland, they'll always ask you at the end of the day to write your thoughts and feelings down of that day on paper, you know, because it is therapy for yourself and you can just kind of sit back and just get it down on paper or on a, write a chalk on a pavement or talking into a, a dictaphone, whatever. It just really, it is kind of therapy, like, you know, just talking about it and just kind of taking an assessment of the day, like, you know, and it really does help. So that's why I don't think I'll ever stop. I'll never stop writing, that's for sure, you know. I'll always do it. Maybe just for myself, even, you know. Um, I don't think that I'll be good enough to ever have anything published, like, but I would like to write a book, and even, you know, even just for myself, for my family, maybe, just to kind of put things in perspective, you know. Some hardy jigs, played some hardy rigs, the water round me bubbling off the holy head. Wish myself was dead, better off instead on the rocky road to double it one to three for five. But the hair would turn her down the rocky road, and all the way to double and whack for loudy rock. The boys of Liverpool are wet. I safely landed, called myself a fool Could no longer stand, the blood began to boil Temper I was losing, poor old Aaron Dial They began abusing, hurrah, me 
sources I should lay the eye the Galloway boys were by, they saw I was a hobbling with the loud hooray Joined in the affray, quickly cleared the way for the rocky road to Dublin One, two, three, four, 